Okay, today's video is about experimental investigations and scientific questions. So, experimental investigations, this is the third type of investigation that we will talk about in class. There were two others in the previous video, descriptive and comparative. Well, today's is experimental, and it's similar to comparative, but a little more complicated. So, experimental investigation tests how something affects the tested group. So, you're seeing what effect something has on something else, and I'll clarify that. These are the most complex uh, investigations. There's an extra step you have to do for an experimental investigation. They include a control group, which basically is a group that doesn't have the tested item, and we'll call, talk about that more in our next video. It takes, tests one thing at different levels. So you may be testing the amount of water a plant receives, and you would test no water, a little water, some water, and a lot of water. So you're all testing water just at different levels, and that's what makes this an experimental investigation. Okay, so for some examples. First, how does temperature affect mold growth on bread? So you would test different temperatures, maybe cold, medium, and hot, and you would see how that affected how much uh, mold growth grew on the bread. So if there's a lot, of, a lot of mold or a little mold, that's what you would be measuring. Second, what effect does flower food have on the lifespan of cut roses? So you would test no flower food, a little bit, some, and a lot. So again, you're always testing the flower food because that's what we're testing just at different levels, zero, maybe 10 grams, 20 grams, and 30 grams. And lastly, does Gatorade affect how fast I can run? So you would run without Gatorade, with a little Gatorade, and with a lot of Gatorade. And you would see after you drank each amount, can you run faster? So the common thread that all of these experiments have is that they're testing one thing and how it affects the group. So we're testing temperature on the mold growth. We're testing flower food on the lifespan, how long the roses last. And we're testing Gatorade on your speed. And you test it in different levels. Okay, so the first part of the scientific method that you start are your questions. A scientific question defines what type of investigation you will do and how you will do it. So depending on your question, you might do a descriptive, a comparative, or an experimental investigation. It also tells you how you will do your experiment or your investigation. You know, how will you set it up, how many trials will you do, what types of things will you be measuring. A scientific question must be these three things. It must be testable, measurable, and specific. So these three examples are questions that do not fit these three uh, criteria, these three things we're looking for. So the first one, testable. This question would not fit the testable. Should scholars wear uniforms? There's no way to test that. Um, it's not something where you could conduct an investigation and get an answer. So this is not testable. A testable question could be, what effect do uniforms have on scholar scores? So you would test people wearing uniforms and not wearing uniforms and see if there's a difference in their test scores. That would be testable. Measurable. Which food is best? How can you measure that? What kind of things would you measure? What data would you write down? There's no way to test this one. You could, however, do an experiment on which food has the most calories. That would be a descriptive uh, investigation. You would find out what food has most calories or how many calories a food has. So measurable, you need to be able to write down data and get information, measuring, observations, things like that. Specific, this is a big one that a lot of sixth graders have trouble with. You need to be as specific as possible so that you can know exactly what you're testing. How, plant, how fast do you plants grow? What plants? What are you looking for? Are we talking sunflowers or are we talking maple trees? Big difference. Okay? 
You need to be as specific as possible so that you can make sure somebody else can repeat your experiment. Okay. And then lastly, on questions. Questions cannot be these three things. First, it cannot be based on opinion. So in the last board we saw, you know, should uniforms be worn? That would be an opinion. Another one is which flower is prettiest? That depends on who you ask. There's no way to test that. So this one is based on opinion, which questions cannot be. A better question would be which plant grows faster, a sunflower or a rose? You can't judge prettiness. That is someone's opinion. Next, it cannot be based on unreal things. You may laugh, but I have a lot of people put this question down. How tall are aliens? Okay, there's no way for us to test that because we're not entirely sure aliens exist. So, must be based on real things. No ghosts, no aliens, no UFOs, no Bigfoot, no Loch Ness Monster. Real stuff. And lastly, it cannot be based on morals, which are values or things you believe in. Okay, so is cheating wrong? There's no way to do an investigation on that. This isn't testable. It cannot be based on morals. So, you could do a descriptive investigation on what is the average punishment for cheating at North Hills. That would be a good descriptive investigation because you'd be finding out the results of cheating.